trying to think about what to say to not seem desperate because I just said I was talking to someone. So I was like, I've been curious about who's talking me up. And he messaged me not too long after that. And I just kind of started talking. Welcome to the DK Network Show. Thanks for tuning in with us. Let's cover a few things before we get this show on the road. First, make sure you give this video a like. Second, subscribe if you haven't already. And lastly, enjoy this episode. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for having us. Let's go right into it. So, Neil, how did you and Alexi meet? Um, <laughs> that's kind of a long story. Um, Could have fact, been sooner than we thought it was, but we don't know. Yeah, in fact, so that's what's interesting is when we, so when we were in high school, mm -hmm. um, she would like come to our games and stuff, like come to our football games. Okay. And I had no idea about that until she told me, but we could have very easily crossed paths in high at school and never known it, like at the gym or whatever, like she would come and play basketball and stuff. Yeah. Cause she's a year, she's a year older. She's, she's a year older. Now I remember seeing Lexi like, yeah, I, I remember knew, I knew meeting you. you. So I knew who you were. So you, you, you'd have and to I think knew, if she met you at some point. Then. Well, I, I remember hearing his name like mm -hmm. several times, but I don't remember. Like, I don't ever, we never just were like, hey. I don't remember um, that. Yeah. So. I would have remembered. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't think there was actual time. I don't think so. It but, was just. So officially. Maybe in the same room. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Um, but never really crossed paths and like had a relationship at all. No, no not until. So I knew um, uh, a couple people. So Conway Christian affiliations, that because she went to Conway Christian, she's a year older than us, she graduated in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, I knew, number one, I knew her brother, Andrew. Mm -hmm. So Andrew and I um, kind of knew of each other through playing basketball together when we would come back and play mm -hmm. at Conway Christian. We played at Conway a couple times. and mm -hmm. um, So knew of him and um, through Garrett Standridge, mm -hmm. who you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and kind of formed a relationship with him. And um, there was a point where Garrett was really urging me to reach out to Alexi because he knew her in high school and knew of her family and just how awesome that they were. And so mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was not ready for that at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And so I kept pushing him off and was like, yeah, okay. Like, yeah, I know she's awesome. Like, you say that, you know. Like, yeah. You know how you know how friends are. They're like, hey, this girl's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and um, so I finally, after probably three or four months of like putting him off and like saying, yeah, okay, I get it. Like she's awesome. Like everyone is. You know. Yeah. That you talk about. Yeah. Um, I finally reached out to. So I worked with um, a guy mm -hmm. named Andrew Robertson, Coach Rob. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach Rob and I worked together at Greenbrier. He coached football. Uh, we coached football together. Um, and um, so I knew of, I knew that Coach Rob had coached her brothers. Yeah. And uh, so uh, Caleb and Jesse both uh, played for Coach Rob. Mm -hmm. And so I reached out to Coach Rob. I was like, hey, I was like, I've been hearing some things about the Baither family. I said, tell me about them. Like, is this something? He said, and I said, listen, like, you know, I'm, single guy I'm looking for you know good good partner yeah uh good family you know what do you, what can you tell me mm -hmm. and uh right away like i've never heard anybody so adamant <laughs> uh about just speaking highly about her and mm -hmm. her family and um all the positives of why i should reach out to her and so i did and um we stopped through facebook actually <laughs> the good old-fashioned way 20 <laughs> 21 <laughs> and so um so 2021 2020 the, it was like the end of 2021 yeah it's so like august yeah or september it was Mid, september yeah yeah september. yeah which is saying a lot because that's like right in the middle of football season and um that was after covid so like you know covid was between like 2019 2020 mm -hmm. and then yeah. 2021 2021 yeah. okay september yeah. 2021 yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so what happened next? Babe? Well, um, <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, you seem cool, but I'm talking to someone. So, cause I, you know, I knew why he was oh, like, wow. reaching out. Okay. So I was like, let's just, you know, <laughs> let's just, <laughs> let's just take care of this before. <laughs> um, you actually were talking to someone. I actually was talking to someone. And, but the funny thing is after I said that, 
like I remember hearing about him so we had mutual mutual friends and I was like one side of me was like oh he's probably like just this you know football guy coming back home lonely you know yeah. And but then the other side of me was like, well, oh, dang, false. it could be I could have just missed, you know, an opportunity. Like, what if he really is a genuine? And I knew that what I was doing, who I was talking to at the time, wasn't a good situation. Okay. So okay. then I was like, wow, I could just be messing this up. But then I just kind of like, you know, blew it off. But then um, yeah. that ended up not working out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was just like couldn't get out of my mind for some reason and I told my brother mm-hmm. about it eventually I was like hey have you have you heard of Neil Burcham and he was like what why and I did I wasn't gonna tell him that <laughs> yeah. he messaged me but he was like Lexi why and I was like well he sent me a message on Facebook and he was like what what and I was like what are you I'm like oh, what are you talking about and he was like yeah. Neil Burcham and so he was like he got a message in back and I was like okay why and he was like Lexi he's a great guy he was like, and I don't say that about people, and he really doesn't. I mean, he doesn't like he doesn't Appreciate really talk anger. up, talk other guys up really, especially yeah. to a sister who you know, yeah, who they're pretty protective of. But anyway, yeah. so yeah, that makes sense. Then I was like, okay, oh my gosh, and so then for like three days, I was trying to think about what to say to not seem desperate because I just said I was talking <laughs> to someone. So, yeah. so yeah, I ended so up, she she played it off perfectly. Yeah, and, I ended up messaging him back, and so I was like, so who are these people? talking me up or whatever because I was like I've been curious about who's talking me up and he messaged me not too long after that and then we just kind of that's what I knew started talking that's from what you there did. that's and, what I knew um it was a wrap at that yeah. point okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I could see that I could see how all of that would come together and how you two would click so quickly um <clears throat> which is a good transition into our faith that we all share um, how did that play a role in in y'all getting to know each other? Hmm, good question. Yeah. You know, as a young adult, you're trying to decide who's meant for me. Is this who God wants? And then what's what should be things that you think are like tight and loose? You know, as far as mm-hmm. your standards. values and standards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'd con like I was real strict, you know, on those. And then uh, like early twenties, I was like, maybe I shouldn't, you know. Because things haven't worked out with people, so maybe I need to be a little bit more reevaluate what yeah those reevaluate are. what those are. But um, then when we started talking, it just it seemed like what I had thought I would never find. Mm-hmm. Like we agreed on the same things, wow. and there wasn't any um, you know things I was anxious before about saying should I uh, let this go because of these certain things mm-hmm. that he thinks aren't okay or are okay um so that's kind of when I just knew because there was no I mean there was no anxiousness about that or question about things that in the past yeah I had thought yeah um, maybe that's not really what what I we can agree on right yeah and so um, for the the long term yeah I think that was a big deal just being able to and you know even things we have maybe like questioned oh you know do you think this is okay or and we've been able to talk through it without one person just being like you know I'm gonna do this because I want to do it and even if you don't like it like you just gotta you know it was yeah there was nothing so I think that was a big thing for me Mm -hmm. just to feel very confident and steady the whole time in what we believed in and how um we how God was gonna be the center and um Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess I, yeah. So, so y'all talked about those things openly when you first got to know each other, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. He was very straightforward going in. Like he was, you know, he was like, I'm dating to marry and, um, when you're playing around. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Yeah. Very quickly. Yeah. The first, our first date, he was like, now, you know, I'm a football coach, so Mm -hmm. I'm going to. This is going to take up a lot of my time. And the first date, like, mm-hmm. um, so he was, like, moving forward. And I was like, moving forward? Wow. Like, so. Um, yeah. And that just comes from, can... like, so we both met each other at a later age. And so, like, we had. What's a, both, later, what's a later age? So I'm, we'll reveal this info to the public. Uh, I'm 30. She's 31. 
I'm going to be 31. Oh, sorry, she's going to be 31. So we're really About three weeks. weeks. Really young. Well, yeah, <laughs> relative, really it's young. all relative. I mean... All right, but... Yes. <laughs> I got a little gray coming in, but, you know, we're okay. all we're all relatively young. Yeah, I don't see it. But I just see, you know, I know couples who have yeah. been together a lot earlier than that. I just say yeah. later, as in we were 29 when we met and started talking. And so mm-hmm. I think... Like for me, there was so much, like I talk about this with some people, like if we had met when I was 23, 24, like yeah. I was not I personally, in the <laughs> she would yeah, have been like, I don't want to talk to this guy, yeah. but there was a, there was a, a period of time. And I think God, you know, it's all in God's timing. There's no question about that. I just, I, I like, we, we still talk about how we're just amazed at how everything came together at the right time. Mm-hmm. And uh, there were things in my life and things in her life too, where it was just like the ebbs and flows of life, mm-hmm. and we just weren't ready at a certain point. And then it kind of came together when it did, and it just seemed like it was perfect timing, and it was um, just meant to be. And so, like, you know, I say that to say that when when I when I started to pursue uh, her, I knew what not to say <laughs> like I knew like because I had life experience and I had been through things and been through relationships and was able to use that to um, kind of help guide me on how to pursue a woman mm-hmm. and do it in the right way and one of the things I wanted to be very clear on and openly communicate was my intentionality on uh, what a relationship was supposed to look like and what it was gonna look like and uh, just really tried to make that um, a foundational piece of our communication and our um, relationship very early so that there was no gray area, mm-hmm. you know, two or three months in, yeah. all right, who is this guy? I didn't want to, you know, because you see people play the game and you have to put on a face and I just wanted to be very genuine and open right from the start. Um, and I think that that was beneficial uh, for us to just get to know each other. I mean, at the end of the day, like that's, what the goal is, is to get to know someone on a deeper level and mm-hmm. be able to um, be vulnerable and share, you know, your thoughts and trust the other person. And in order to trust someone, you have to know them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so um, yeah. I think that's where, where it started. There was no waiting period. Like it was like right from the jump, like let's get into this thing and try to figure out who we really are. Yeah. Um, and so from my, from my perspective, God worked all that out. Um, it was, it was like, if there's anybody that has no, you know, has no right to stand up here and talk about, um, like how this has all been, it's just been all taken care of. I feel like, um, all grace. It's, it really has, um, like a point where I, you know, didn't think that I was ever going to find anybody mm-hmm. and, um, you know, and then to, to find someone like her who has just been, um, you know, 10 out of 10, to say the least. <laughs> so I, um, we grew up in church. Um, you know, I never knew anything other than going to church on Sundays and Wednesdays and um, we went to Sunday school. Um, and it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just a family that did that at church. When we came home, you know, we would, my parents prayed with me at night and they made sure to teach us at home too. And I feel like um, I'm very grateful for just, they're, you know, they were always like genuine and transparent with us. They would come and apologize and they would, you know, tell us, you know, um, that they struggle too and they need God's grace too. Mm. And, um, I feel like, you know, I was just very blessed to have parents that, um, you know, it wasn't just a church on Sunday thing and that, that's, that's a, uh, big deal. Yeah, that really is. So, um, shout out Darren and Lori. Yeah. And so yeah, that's uncommon. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like, you know, they were very real with us and we had good conversations. So when I was, I remember I was five years old and my parents got me this little Bible for Christmas and they had written in it and they got it for me because I, I remember, I remember this, like, um, I don't remember her name, but she was a Sunday school teacher at church and she had really short hair. And she prayed the, you know, the prayer of faith with me. And so, um, even though at that time, you know, and I'll talk about this later too, like I didn't quite, you're five years old, so you don't quite know, but I genuinely wanted to 
you know, become a Christian and pray that prayer. So mm-hmm. I prayed the prayer of faith, asking Jesus to come into my life when I was five. And then my parents, I told my parents, and they bought me this little Bible and said, you know, wrote the date in there that I prayed the prayer and stuff. So that was kind of just a cool yeah. moment. Um, we were in this thing. It's called Missionettes. It's like Christian Girl Scouts. They're called different things in different denominations, I think. But okay. I had my little vest with my like sewn-on patch. Yeah. I remember I was wearing it at Christmas because I was really proud, and that's when I got my Bible. So. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, that solidified a good memory for you. Yeah, yeah. I still remember what it looks like and everything. But, um, you know, like years pass, and... Um, I'm very grateful for our church that I grew up in. Um, I did end up, um, our dogs are scratching at the yeah, door. Yeah, dogs just, are going crazy yeah, out there. Yeah, sorry. So. Um, but anyway, so we, um, I was raised in a church that was a little, um, they, I feel like as far as scripture knowledge, I knew a lot of scripture because they were very good about, um, you know, we memorized scriptures and it wasn't just a memorization thing, but I was able to hear and read a lot of scriptures growing up. And so I'm thankful for that too. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I was 11, I remember, um, kind of going through this weird phase of, um, I don't know if you call it depression or, you know, like as a kid, you have these weird fears and, yeah. um, you know, it's the kind of, it was the kind of preacher that is like hellfire and brimstone. And, you know, you're like this 10, 11 year old, mm-hmm. you know, sitting there listening to like the tribulation and all this stuff. And yeah, so not the gospel. You're hearing like these revelations right. of the end times. Yes. Yes. And mm-hmm. so I remember as a kid, just thinking, um, like being terrified and thinking I needed to just pray and repent every night, you know, and be ready. And yes, yeah, um, they were trying to scare you into heaven. Right. Um, it sounds like, yes. And so, you know, as a kid, that's scary. And so I felt, um, but just scared all, a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I just remember sitting in my room one night and I mean, just when it got dark out, it was almost like it was just scary. Yeah. Um, and I just remember this song came on. I still remember the song. If any of y'all people grew up with Christian artists, if you know Zoe Girl, that was the <laughs> artist that. Um, and it was a song called Suddenly, and it's just talking about suddenly you're here with me. Um, I know you'll be here till the end of time. And um, like it gets me real emotional, like thinking about it, because I still like remember that moment. And that was the first time I had felt. God, you know, like, you know who God is, but you remember the first time you really felt, I don't even know a word for it, just like warmth, I guess. And you just felt, um, safe. And so like you, you actually received the love of God. Yes. Like in your heart. Yes. Um, and I was like, wow, you know, that's, um, that's just one of those moments in your life that you'll always remember. Um, And so I kind of prayed again, you know, asking God, you know, to make sure I was a Christian. Um, Because the denomination we went to, it was, um, it was not the once saved, always saved, you know, that you hear. Mm -hmm. Um, And so... What denomination was it? It was Assembly of God. And so they do believe that, like, you could lose your salvation. And so in my head, you know, as a kid, I'm always trying to repent at night and I didn't quite oh, yeah. fully under grasp. It's can, it can be confusing when, right. especially if, if you, if, if the Lord has you in his hand, which I don't, I can't quote the scripture mm-hmm. verbatim, but yeah. basically the Lord doesn't, um, if you're in the hand of the Lord is, is what the scripture that I'm trying to recall says. If you're in the hand of the Lord, he won't let you go out mm-hmm. of his hand, which means that you can't lose your salvation. Mm-hmm. But then also, I can see where that would be confusing if it's trans or if it's thought of in a different way. Yeah. Um, to where you can lose it. Right. To where like it becomes a, a workspace. Mm-hmm. Thing. Yes, and that's what I was about to get into. You know, as I'm getting older, I'm just my personality. I'm very like follow the rules, um, perfectionist kind of personality. So. 
type A? Growing up, I was like youth leader, children's church leader, um, on the praise team. I led small groups. And so looking back, I did want to please God for sure. But I think, Mm -hmm. and I think being in leadership is a good way of accountability for yourself. Absolutely. So I do, I'm thankful for that. But I think for me, it just became a lot of, and I'm, I'm the oldest sibling of seven. I'm the first out of seven. So that for me too was a lot of like, I got to be perfect. I got to do all this stuff. Set the example. Set the example. Um, when really I don't quite know if that was all for God, like all the choices that I made. It was A lot of it was just because I knew the position that I was in and who all I would disappoint. Yeah. If I decided to go to this party or go try a drink or listen to certain kinds of music, you know, it was a yeah. lot of things that I always felt very convicted about, very like sensitive about just because of who I was around and who was looking to me to be this person who's on stage singing every Sunday, you know. Um, you actually sang on stage? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, since I was like 14. The first time, it's funny actually. You sang I, at your wedding. I did sing at oh, my right. wedding, yeah. Yes, yeah, the first time I sang on stage, I was like probably five in a Christmas. <laughs> Lots of Christmas um, <laughs> Christmas uh, performances, yeah. plays, Christmas, Christmas plays. plays. Yeah. But no, the first time I sang by myself in like an actual worship song, I, got, I was on stage, I was the background singer, and the lead singer um, was kind of like a mentor for me, and she was, I would practice with them, and all of a sudden, she was like, all right, Lexius, you got this, and I was like, I mean, it was like in the middle of church, like, so I just started singing the song, but oh, well. ever since then, I was kind of like my push forward of, yeah, um, sometimes you need stuff like that, a little, yeah. a little nudge every now and then, yeah, maybe. so I remember that, I was terrified, well, I, you know, first, I just think, you know, when, when you talk about my journey, so I think it's one of a, a steady growth and realization of who I am in Christ, um, I think it's been, it, it really has been a, you know, when Alexi talks about first kind of receiving a knowledge of who God is at five years old, it was very similar for me because um, like like her and like, and like a lot of people, I grew up in church and we went every Sunday, we went every Sunday night and we went every Wednesday from when I can remember until about my junior year of high school. And so I grew up my entire life, my young uh, teenage life, going to church. And um, I, at about eight years old, remember that same interaction with God. One night I was laying in bed and I just realized there was something missing in my life. I realized that there was, um, that I wasn't, I wasn't at peace with where I was in the world. And um, so I was laying there late. I thought it was late. It was probably like 930. <laughs> But I've been put to bed. Uh, I've lived upstairs in Greenbrier um, in, a, in a bunk bed. I remember being on top bunk, and I was in third grade, and um, there was just it was just this uneasy feeling of like I'm not where I need to be. Like something's missing. I don't know what it is, but there's this gap. There's this hole. There's this missing piece in my life that um, that I know that I need. I just don't really fully know what it is. And I I had the inclination that it was God. That it was something God related. Um, but I didn't quite know what that was. And so I remember going downstairs and, um, my mom and dad were sitting on the couch and I said, mom, come upstairs. <laughs> so she follows me back upstairs and I get in bed and I just lay there for a little bit and she's like, what's going on? And I, I you know, I was, I was nervous. Like I didn't really know how to verbalize what I was feeling. And I said, I want to be saved. And, you know, cause we had grown up in Baptist church. And so it was, it was similar. Like we had a, we had a, a process to, becoming saved. Um, and, um, I remember being in Sunday school real early in life, probably five, six, seven years old. And it was, it was, I remember learning about the ABCs. You accept Jesus for who he is. Um, you believe that he died on the cross and then you confess your sins and then you repent. So ABCR. And that's what I remember being a, uh, <laughs> there's an R in there. Uh, but I remember being five or six years old in Sunday school, learning about the pro- that's the process to becoming a Christian, accept, believe, confess, and then repent. Um, and I still believe that, um, but I didn't quite understand that. Um, and and it was it wasn't until probably my twenties that there was true I would say true belief. I think there's a lot of people that 
claim to believe. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of people that um, want to believe, but it's very personal when you have that heart change of true personal um, belief in the in, in who God is and what God has done and, and, and who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a there's a clear distinction um, when that happens. That is that is a heart change. It changes your life. It changes mm -hmm. your worldview. It changes your perspective on everything. Um, and so I had that moment with God at nine years old um, in my bed late at night that, um, that I prayed the prayer. We went downstairs and we prayed the prayer. Mm -hmm. God, I accept you into my heart as my Savior and I want you to be my Lord and Savior. And I, I confess that I've sinned and I'm, um, you know, but it, but it was just a prayer. Like I checked the box. Like of, I prayed the prayer and I, oh, now I'm saved. Um, but again, that, like I'm nine. I, not that I don't think you can be saved at nine. Um, but I still had a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I didn't fully understand kind of what that meant. Mm -hmm. um, you said you do believe you can be saved at nine or don't? Yeah, I think you can. Okay. Yeah, I think you can. Um, I, I, you know, but I don't think I was at a place personally where I, there were still, there were still doubt. Yeah. There was still yeah. doubt. There yeah. was still a lot of doubt. Um, which, which is normal. It's it some, is. It's something new you don't know fully about. Yeah. I have lots of questions. Yeah. And so I would say that I was, I, I accepted God for who he is at nine years old. Mm -hmm. I accepted God. I, I believed that God was real and that Jesus was real. Like I believed that at nine. Um, and then, you know, fast forward to high school. I was, um, you know, continuing to go to church. Um, and then there was a point in college and through my early 20s that was the dark ages. It was a period of time where I drifted away from what I knew was truth that I had learned from nine years old. Um, I just became, um, I don't know, I don't know the, the word for it, but complacent maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, just, um, just drifted away, mm -hmm. you know, I think, which is so easy to do. I wasn't around a, a group of people, a community. Mm -hmm. I wasn't involved in church. Um, my family stopped going to church at, at the end of high school. Mm -hmm. Um, so there was this, this drifting and it was such a slow process. Like it wasn't one day I woke up and I'm like, Oh no, I, you know, like you kind of, you realize over the period of six or seven years and you look up seven years later and you're like, I'm not even the same person yeah. as I was. Live a totally different life. Totally, di totally like different. The, my, my habits, my thoughts, um, what I was doing, what I was watching, what I was, how I was talking was totally different yep. than what I had claimed to be for so long. And that was, uh, that was, that was hard because I knew it was like, I knew what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. I was just, didn't really know how to, I was just slipping and didn't know how to catch my feet. Yep. You know, yep. and, and, and it was just kind of this, but again, it was just this slow transition of drifting away, um, from, from God, from who God is and who God was calling to me to be and uh, what my purpose was. Um, it was always this, and I always tell people too, like the Holy Spirit was constantly finding ways to draw me to where I didn't just fall off the cliff. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful for that because I, you know, during that time, during my early twenties, during college and, and after I'm, you know, I could have very easily, you know, ended up in a lot of bad places and I did. Uh, but like I could have very easily went a totally different direction. Yep. But because of my salvation, you talk about like not losing your salvation. I feel like at a young age, having the Holy Spirit, accepting the Holy Spirit, there was this constant tug on my heart to always come back. The guide. The guide. The God, Jesus left us the Holy Spirit to be our teacher and our guide. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that, that's exactly what the Holy Spirit was doing, mm -hmm. it sounds like. Yeah. And I've got to witness this firsthand in your life. Yeah. It's I, like, okay, because I want to point out, um, especially for people who may not be believers who are watching this episode, like the Holy Spirit isn't this, um, th this imaginary friend, mm -hmm. or Jesus isn't like this imaginary friend, um, that we're talking about, we're actually talking about a person who came, who who was born of the Holy Spirit, talking about Jesus. 
who lived a perfect life, who gave his perfect blood for our sins to make us in right standing with God. When we have faith that that is who he is and what he did, and we receive that on our, on our behalf. So like Alexi was saying, it's not something we've earned, but it's something that we've received that we didn't deserve. Um, and when Jesus left, okay, let's, let's just say that we all are agree on that. Um, when Jesus rose from the dead, which means that he is not dead, um, and we believe that he is currently alive, before he ascended into heaven, which he, we believe he currently is, he made himself, he presented himself to over 500 people, and this is in the Bible, you can go read it for yourself, um, to verify that he did raise from the dead, and he didn't just go back to the 12 disciples and make it a whole conspiracy, he actually revealed himself to many people um, to verify that this was an actual account. But before he left, he didn't just leave us and say, you know, I'm going to be gone, you know, just remember what I said, and hopefully I'll figure it out. He left us with the Holy Spirit to be our guide and our teacher. Um, we also have the inspired word, which is the Bible, which confirms the Holy Spirit as well. So it all goes together. Um, they don't contradict. And what Neil is saying is that the Holy Spirit is the, like I said, not an imaginary thing. It's, it's a spirit that you receive. And let me, let me throw this in there without going into depth. Everybody operates on a spirit. And there's different types of spirits. Now, the Holy Spirit is a spirit from God, and it's, it is God's spirit, which is what makes people separate who have received Christ and stand out from other spirits, stand out from the world. It sets us apart. Um, so what Neil's saying is that that Holy Spirit was always prompting him, like, go in this direction, do these things to be better, um, not on his own will, but from God's will for him. Yeah. And so, yeah, thank you for that, that clarification because, um, like I say, so at nine, I feel like I received the Holy Spirit, you know, like there was a, there was a belief, obviously there was doubt, you know, and I think everybody goes through that. Every Christian goes through, through doubt. Mm -hmm. Um, but I always say the ebbs and flows of life, Christian life, like there's times where you feel very close and very connected to who God is and who, and what his purpose is. And then there's times where you just don't. Mm -hmm. And you're just not sure. You're unsure. Like, am I doing the right things? Am I supposed to go to Korea? Do I need to take this job? Do I need to take this step? Am I supposed to reach out to this person? You just question, you doubt. Um, but I think for me personally, the Holy Spirit was always there. And there was always that redirection of if I just, if I just would have taken the time to sit back and realize like, okay, this is the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Like it would have been very easy for me to take the steps necessary I needed to take. But in my own sin, in my own misdirection, in my own environment, I wasn't quite able to see clearly what God had for me. Yeah. And so um, I, was, I was misguided in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But again, to say that I always was redirected and I always had that securance of like, okay, at the end of the day, I know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. But my own selfishness and ego and... And influences. Influences. Um, you know, I, I didn't always take that step. And so I say that to say that there was a period of my life where I, I was battling with that for a long time. Um, and eventually I hit a point where, and, and you were, you were a part of this, you were a part of a lot of this journey. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, yeah. you know, firsthand. Know a lot of backstory. About. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but just the, uh, and that's a wrap. Thank you for tuning in and supporting what God is doing through this channel. We are so grateful for the opportunity to make content like this and hope it has blessed you. Details for other ways to support can be found in the description below. We appreciate your prayers and donations. Be blessed, and we'll see ya on the next one.